the journalist, but the, it's not a novel. It's kind of a little bit dry. That means it's, she, she did very serious research and went down to archives, and she tells the whole story of the Jewish uh, of the Jewish people in, in Vienna at those days. And I spoke before about the art and culture. She really gets into depth uh, 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 describing it, and then she tells the entire story of the family and of this painting. It's very very interesting, but it's only if you're very interested because it's not a novel. Um, and the movie, in my opinion, is excellent. It's a little bit Hollywoody, but it's still, in my opinion, excellent. So I just want to remind uh, the story because this this case became like a um, like a light, or I don't know how to call it. What? Leaking. Okay. For for other people to understand that it's possible, and it is time to 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 do it, to make historical justice, and we don't have to shut our mouths anymore, okay? We have our rights. So uh, this is, the, um, I'm reminding you that it's a gorgeous, gorgeous painting. It's good some cream. He had what's called the gold period. He laid on the canvas gold leaves, just like we know from manuscripts. It's really quite incredible. And also all these gorgeous decorations that kind of reminds us of Byzantine art. Um, and the story is, and listen to the details I'm giving you now, is that her husband commissioned Klimt to paint his wife's portrait. And I reminded you before that some of the Jews were patrons of artists. So he, he painted many um, many Jewish women, and it also, not 100% not moral, this whole uh, <laughs> story. In any case, um, that this is a woman. Now she's a, she's a lovely woman, and I want you to pay attention. The name of this painting is Portrait of Adele Lochbauer. Now, what's the name that you know? Woman in, Woman in Gold. That's not the name of the painting. The name of the painting is Portrait of Del Blochbauer, a young woman. She was a high society in the Viennese cultural world. Um, she had a salon that people used to come and do these special evenings and you know all these social evenings. But she was very frail and sick, and she passed away at a young age. And she and her <coughs> husband, Ferdinand, did not have children. But they lived together with his brother and the children. So the nieces and the nieces lived with their aunt, with their aunt Adele Blanc-Bauer. And look at how gorgeous, how he portrayed her, so frail, um, and some kind of like her, her complex complexity and like something like psychological, really quite incredible, uh, the painting of Adele Blanc-Bauer. This obviously is a photograph of her from those days. So her niece, her niece Maria Altman, Adele's niece had passed away in the meantime in 2011. After her sister Louise died, both of them managed to flee from, uh, and they lived in California all the years. She decided she just can't see the woman in gold, that's how it's called, hung in the Belvedere Museum in Vienna. Because the story is they came to their house, the SS soldiers, and they stole everything the family had. They even stole the musical instruments, they stole their paintings, as in they stole their paintings, everything, the jewelry, everything. They didn't leave them a thing. And the painting was taken to the Belvedere National Belvedere Austria Gallery. And for 10, for a soft shutting 10, for almost 50 years, it was shown and it became one of the most famous paintings of Austria, known as the Woman of Gold. Not only that, it was even called by Austrians, it brought them pride. And it was called the Mona Lisa of Austria, Ad Kedeka. And she just couldn't, she, and, and she sees her aunt. She sees her aunt in the painting, and, and the painting was hung in their house because they lived together. So she decided she can't be, uh, be quiet anymore, and she looked for a lawyer, and she, and she heard that there's, that there's starting to be some restitution laws, and she looked for a lawyer. But who, who's gonna help her with such a crazy, crazy idea? So she was very lucky, and she found a son of one of her friends. His name was Randall Schoenberg. This is her when she was young, but here I'm showing you with a, with the good uh, end, okay, it's um, 2005. Uh, this is uh, Maria, and his name is Randall Schoenberg. Now you hear the last name. Randall Schoenberg is the composer. grandson of the composer, that he also fled uh, to New York. So this this guy, is Randall, he grew up as an American. What does he care about his history? But all of a sudden, when he started hearing about this, he started getting interested in his personal family history, and he said, I'm leaving everything with Mamash, a young, young man with a new job. He 
he left everything and he said, I'm, this is what I'm doing now. And he didn't get a penny. She was a very simple woman. She had a little um, clothes store. That's all she had. She said, I don't have anything to pay you. So for more than five years, he tried, he went to all, any court, every court possible in Austria, in the United States, met with any, every official possible. And the final, the bottom line is, is that the main, uh, the main claim from the Austrian side was that they found a letter in the archive that said there, uh, it's a letter from Adele Blochbauer, which is true, that she says, I wish to donate this painting to the Belvedere after my husband and I uh, pass away. And on the other side, they, what, what, what can they claim against? Two major things he claimed. He got to the high court. One, she wrote that she, is, she wishes to donate it after she and her husband died, and it was stolen when her husband was still alive. He fled. He fled to Switzerland. Mm. And in 1945, he passed away. Also, he got very sick. Her husband, 39. So that's one that doesn't count. But the major claim was that she is not the owner of the painting. She can't donate the painting because she's not the owner. Who's the owner? Her husband. He's the one that commissioned clips. So that was like the bottom line of five years of, uh, okay, of this claim, and it's really quite incredible. And the main thing was that there was historical justice done, and it was very, you know, all the news, and, and, and everyone heard about this. And this really led people to start looking and to start thinking maybe they also have a possibility. Um, in Israel, actually, it's interesting, there's what's called Hashava. It's not only art, it's, it's property and art that belonged also to people before the Holocaust that you can claim. But in order to know it belongs to you, you need lists. So the, so the state of Israel made lists that you can look up. And may, who knows, there's a, uh, stories of people that didn't know that their grandparents once bought a piece of land. I can read through a story of a sculptor of Nathan Rappaport. And it turns out that his grandfather bought land in the area of Afula. And only now, a few years ago, his grandchildren that live in Israel got a phone call from, from the state of Israel, from the Mishpatim, um, and, and said, did you know that you have land that you own in Afula? And they own it. Oh, I know that. <laughs> <laughs>